Welcome back uh, to the Ben um, uh, Breakfast uh, uh, Show. Uh, well, it's now time to look at uh, football, and this is why joining me now is uh, uh, Tim Zimbabwe, UK Technical Director, uh, Wellington Muringai. Have I said it in the right, Zimbabwe? Muringai. <laughs> yes, that's the way. <laughs> uh, welcome, uh, uh, Wellington. Um, firstly, congratulations to Tim Zimbabwe uh, for beating Nigeria, uh, defending champions of the Africa Cup. Uh, uh, UK on uh, Sunday uh, to the tune of two goals to zero. What does that mean for the Zimbabwean community here in the UK? Um, thank you for, for having me on your show. Um, it is a great achievement for, for the Zimbabwean community as a whole because when we started this project 10, 10 years ago, the idea was to bring um, the community together because we had Zimbabweans all over the country, or specifically in London. They were, they were West London, East London, you know. So we needed to bring the community together in one, you know, one sort of area and head and pull together as a community. And now we, we, are, we, are, we are there now. We are there. Okay, I mean, uh, teams in this uh, UK Africa Cup football tournament, teams like uh, uh, Team Nigeria, uh, probably one of the best, most organized team in terms of structures and everything. Um, the Ghanans as well are okay. But uh, this year, people say you looked very organized. And uh, where did you get the money from is the question. Or where did you get that funding? You looked very organized. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the easiest thing to do in diaspora, mm. you know, to get funding from embassies or companies so how did you manage to put yeah like um this? like you you said um the west africans if you look at uh, nigeria they get uh, sponsorship from from their own um, country through the embassy but um we at team zimbabwe you don't have any funding for 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 our, for our team we have had uh, um, sponsors come on board for specifically some, for, for example, they all said, I will sponsor you, we'll buy you the kit and oh, we'll buy you the tracksuits for the, for the team. But it is the organization that goes on the, in, in the background that is most important. Because when we started, especially on Sundays, when you play the tournament days, it's, two, it's over two days. And before, it used to be over two weekends. So you would have a lot of players come in on, on, an, on, a, on, on Saturday but come Sunday, you, 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 you can't um, raise a, a, a team for, for one game, let alone. But with uh, that experience, we, it has not um, affected us, but it has just um, been a, an experience which we've now used and we've robbed in more resources. And I, one of the main reasons why we were so successful in this year was we, we had quite a large pool of players available to us, both on Saturday and on Sunday. And where do you get these players from? Are they uh, uh, mm -hmm. just players that are playing park football or are they actually semi-pros? No, we've got um, semi-pros and... Um, uh, just general local, just general local uh, players. Some are not uh, playing at the moment. But um, we've got a, a good um, fusion in there. We've got experience in the young and upcoming uh, youngsters. Most of the guys who, who won at the trophy were play, playing for our under-17 teams two, three years ago. So it's, um, it's a progression. Yeah, brilliant. I was coming mm -hmm. to that, actually, to say... Uh, uh, David Doherty uh, from Nigeria yes. uh, started this Nigeria under-17, Team yes. Nigeria under-17. And he came here on the breakfast show and told mm. us that his aim was uh, uh, for the Nigerian under-17 in Nigeria to mm -hmm. use the Team Nigeria UK as a feeding team yes. to the under-17. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Zimbabwe looked at what uh, lovely Nigeria was doing, copied and pasted and did the same. You just recently came back from uh, Zimbabwe. You mm -hmm. took a team of yep. teenagers yep. in the UK, like David Doherty, took them to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. how, tell, us, tell us more, how did that go and uh, what does that mean to, for Zimbabwean football moving forward? Yes, um, it was um, our a maiden tour to, for, for us to, to, to do this tour. And uh, as you rightly say, it's... Um, it's a project which has been done by, by, by David Doggett at the uh, Team Nigeria UK. It is an ideal setup for, <clears throat> for, for, both for players or young, young players in the diaspora in the sense that 
whilst the coaches back home who are in charge of the under 17s or the under 23s or you know even the national team they might not have the you know the resources to come and watch these players play here or you know they use the modern technology these they send us some video clips to watch players but we believe to see for 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 the coaches to 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 to, to watch the players play for them is 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 it's much better and they can make an assessment so this is what we in the long term, we want to do not only for the under 17s but for teams, teams Zimbabwe UK. It has to be a platform for us to 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 avail talent which is in the diaspora to the to the coaches who will be um, in charge of the national teams. Okay, I like to be nosy. How did you fund those players? To, <laughs> you definitely yeah. you didn't, you didn't hide them in a suitcase yeah, so uh, How we, did you fund them? It's um it's a very it was a diffi very difficult um. Uh, situation, but we needed to do to do the tour to break ice so that it becomes an annual event, or even maybe we do it two or three times a year. But um, on this um, tour, we had um, a sponsorship from Shikson, which is a, a company uh, in, um, in 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 Halo. They, they do marketing and so forth. They they did the most. I would say 70% of, of the sponsorship in, in terms. And then we'd also ask the, the parents and the players to, to try and raise half of the, uh, the AFS. And then we had to... Oh, so it was collective. Collective. So we had to cover... And what was like mm -hmm. the... Sorry to cut you short yeah. there. But then how, what was like the reaction of people in Zimbabwe seeing a UK team, not this time Zimbabweans coming in uh, Gucci, Timberland mm. coming to shine. We live yeah. in England, but yeah. this time totally different, different setup. It's a team of footballers. How did the people react? The the you know just the general public, the common man, and the yeah. Zimbab and Zifa, the Zimbabwean. Um, the, it was a, there was a mixed reaction in terms of um, of uh, of the tour. Firstly, uh, the reaction of when we mentioned that we are coming to tour Zimbabwe. The, the, the mindset which the, the people in Zimbabwe had, they were not so sure what they said. Most of them were, uh, you know, questioning the level of, of for, 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 for our football. But when we got to Zimbabwe and when we played our first match against Chapungu, and they said, oh, well, these people can play football. And so when we, as the tour progressed and we, they was only, we're not only playing foot, football, we're also doing some, you know, community, you know, community work as, as long donating to schools and the less privileged here and there. So as the tour progressed, uh, there was a lot of enthusiasm in, uh, in, the, in, the, in, in Zimbabwe and we started now getting press re, you know, coverage and this and that. But in the end, I would say it was all successful. And I'm sure and they, the boys enjoyed it from here, going, oh, some of them going to Africa for oh, the first time. Yes, yes, yes. It was a great experience for all the boys. Even up to this day, there's just saying, well, as when, when do we go back the next tour? They are looking so forward to it. And um, we, we will start planning for the next one um, as soon as possible. Okay, uh, well, that's Tim Zimbabwe. First, I'm going to give you a handshake that congratulations for uh, Thank beating, you. Uh, you know, defending champions Thank uh, you. Uh, Nigeria. Yeah. Well, let's move on from Africa Cup UK to now the Africa Cup of Nations, uh, which is ongoing in uh, Egypt, uh, as uh, we discuss right now. Of course, uh, the um, you know, results so far are very shocking, Wellington. Um, I'll start off firstly by saying, before I move on to the you know, other countries, mm. that uh, 1974, the first Southern African country uh, to reach, to ever go to the Africa Cup of Nations was Zambia. Yeah. And uh, in 1974, Zambia, on its first appearance in the Nations Cup, reached the finals, mm -hmm. losing to Congo. And uh, this is 2019. Are Southern African countries going to the Africa Cup of Nations for shopping or exposure? Our performance this year, according to uh, Southern African uh, fans, they say it's been shambolic. What do you have to say to that? Um, so it's a symbolic would be <laughs> a bit of a strong word uh, to, to, to you. But um, I think basically the Southern African teams, um, if I can call them SADAC, they've not performed to, to, to the levels. See, when you go to these uh, tournaments, we, do, we 
expect to, to, to progress to the next uh, stage rather than, you know, come out of the group stages. But um, it's, a, it's, an, a, it's a good experience, but in terms of Zimbabwe, South Africa, and Namibia... Yeah, I'm going to touch on Zimbabwe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Zimbabwe have a strong <laughs> squad, you know, the knowledge Musonas, the yes. karma balance of this world, first touch is on the other side. Mm. What, what was Zimbabwe's performance? I mean, they were very unlucky against Uganda, you yeah. know, uh, uh, with that uh, knowledge Musona goal. Miss, yes. Uh, miss. But then, what, how, how do you analyze the general performance of the Zimbabwean team in general, so far? In terms of... Um, Manpower in terms of the, the players we were there, they, they've got enough experience and uh, enough quality to, you know, to stand shoulder to soldier, uh, sword, uh, sh shoulder to shoulder with, um, with the Senegals and uh, the Moroccos. But you see, one thing that I think let us down specifically in this tournament is the organization. It's not the organization, it's not about the 90 minutes in the, in the, in the field. Why do you say the organization was bad? No, because we, I mean, we have had players threatening not, if I say, boycotting training sessions. and Because they've not been paid. Threatening. And that brings <laughs> me to my next question. Right, okay. I'm yeah. going to first go on to the Nigeria-Madagascar game. Yeah. Uh, Madagascar beat Nigeria. Mm. And not that Madagascar cannot beat Nigeria or Brazil, mm. but they beat a very strong, organized Nigerian um, aside. Mm. Now, it's not for us to say we don't want to get in trouble, mm. but there's been allegations of players, it's been alleged that players are not getting paid. And this is why players want to boycott. You spoke about preparations. So we've had the same in uh, similar, like the Nigerian camp. Yep. Uh, the uh, Angolan camp. Mm -hmm. So let's just look at it as a general thing for African teams mm -hmm. not getting paid, mm -hmm. okay, in time. Do you think it will affect the players? I think if I was a footballer, I would still play for my country, you know, regarding, you know, whether I'm paid or not. But, I mean, tell us more. What, what do you think about this wage problem? We've seen an aeroplane from Accra mm. carrying three million dollars like the post offices or banks <laughs> in the world have caught a strike. <laughs> There's no other method, way yeah. of sending money. Mm. I mean, tell us more about what you think about this player situation of not getting paid. Uh, you see, um, in a, it's, it's the same thing. It's, it's the organization. All these teams that are playing uh, at Africa Cup of Nations now, they, they had nearly a year knowing that this competition was going to to, 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 go, to be held in Egypt. So it is about the structure of the organization. You've got to have people behind the scenes. If somebody is responsible for buying the kits, getting the kit and everything, he must do his job. The people there, the money people there, because it's not, this, this money should not be coming from the Zimbabwean government. No, CAF actually pays teams for, 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 for qualifying, just like the World Cup. We know if a team qualifies for the World Cup, each, every participating team gets a, a windfall from, from, from FIFA. It's the same thing with CAF. So how come well, we... I'll just hold yeah. you up there. We've got a caller on the line. Um, good morning, Joseph. Uh, welcome to the Ben Breakfast Show. Please go ahead with your question or contribution. Uh, hello, good morning, Joseph. i uh, probably ask the production team to... Uh, see if we've got a technical issue there. Stay on the line, uh, Joseph. Are you still there? All right, yeah, just continue where you left off. So you're saying... Yes, so this money is... is, is, is okay. It's not entirely the government who is responsible, but the, the football organization, like in our instance, it's Zifa. It is Zifa who is supposed to play the, you know, the, play, the players. So it is up to Zifa to organize before the well before the tournament organize the pay structure or what are they going to play the or how are they going to play to pay the the players and how much so that if there is a shortfall it is zifa's responsibility to approach the government when there's still time before they even call in the players look we we are running short of can you assist here and there but now in this instant we understand the, the you know there was quite a lot of money which was um, mobilized but through 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 the president but then if that money is not getting through to the players or if and what do you think it doesn't get through to the players who who, who <coughs> blocks this money well no one want to mention names but who do you think wh why, why doesn't this money get to the players it's 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 it's, it's the system and why is the system it's not? the system because uh, if we for for example you 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 work for for ben tv you don't have to 
approach the chick CEO to, to get about your monies. There's somebody responsible for that. Let that person who is responsible, the, the Zifa treasurer, he's the one who's responsible for, for, for paying the, 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 the Zifa you know, monies and the Zifa accounts to run, to, to, how to, to keep them, the, the Zifa organization as all running. He's, the, he's the, 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 the main man there. So all the money, even the one which was raised by, through the president initiative, should go to the treasurer and the treasurer should organize and, you know, pay what, what needs to be paid. If it's hotels, pay the hotels. If it's the players, pay the players. If it's the medical staff, pay the medical staff. It's all through the structured organization. So you don't interfere, but we, unfortunately in most African um, football organizations, we've got too much interference. Whoever is the president thinks he can override the treasurer or the secretary general. And why is that attitude like <coughs> that? And why, how, how can we change from that attitude from, you know, you're a man of experience. Well, it's, how, how, it, how do we change that attitude? It's the mindset. It's the mindset. Things can, as long as we, if we change the mindset and how we can change this by putting uh, people who understand football. You understand? This is an... Uh, a football organization uh, running the affairs of a country. So you need to put somebody there who understands football. If it's, in, it's, a, if it's a, a treasurer, he must understand what happens with the treasurer in a football uh, sphere. You cannot just take somebody and say, you're the money person for Zifa. It, it, it's, too, it's too different. There is a football structure, how the finances operate and how the, the, the finances are distributed. So you need to put the right people, the right personnel there, and then it, it, it starts from there. But it just, we can't change it, the mindset from the top. It has to come, start from the gross, grassroots level. Mm. Yes. Well, brilliant. I was also going to come on to the fact that uh, somebody mentioned, or uh, somebody, you know, a, a, a football journalist in Ghana mentioned that the problem we have in, with African football is people want to get into football admin for a personal agenda, either to use that as a springboard to political career, mm -hmm. springboard to business, access to the ministers. Uh, so in, general, in short, this uh, journalist was trying to say, we don't have the right football admins. And it goes back to uh, what you mentioned, said earlier about disorganization. Yeah. Do you think we lack the right football administrators? If we had the right football administrators, up Players will be getting their wages in, in you know, I mean, time. Do you think yes. you know ad, administrators are a problem? We vote for people that have money. You might have more money mm -hmm. than me, but yeah. I might be a better administrator. But yes. people will probably vote for you yes. because when you've got money, even yes. if you tell somebody that uh, mm -hmm. a fly does wear a bra, they will believe yeah. because you've got money. Yeah. So what do you have to say to that? Yeah, um, I totally agree with her, with him. Because um, the, the, the Ghanaian journalist who, who said that, because um, like I said, it's all about the structure of the organization. So what happens in most um, African cases, I know that um, in South Africa, we've got Danny Jordan there. The South African um, uh, Football Association, there's a lot of independence there. There's not much political interference with that. That's why you see South Africa at the, mom at the moment is okay. But when you come to, to Zimbabwe I, um, and other countries. Nigeria countries, these, there's a lot of political influence. You, you have the people right run at the top of football. But what about mm. the Europeans? Do they have that political influence or it's done in a smarter way? If it's, they, they will always be. You, can, you cannot split politics and, 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 and football. But they need that extra, you know, that extra room. Look at the FA here, or look at the UEFA, the way they run. It's uh, it's totally free for, for any political, you know, influence. You see, decisions made by the FIFA, by the FA Association here, has got nothing to do with uh, who's the prime minister at that material time. It's entirely a FIFA decision. That's what we need to do. If if we've got a FIFA president there, he's got to put in. And measures which are good for for the Zimbabwean football as a whole, regardless of who's who's the president or who's this, we have got to stand up for a Zifa football uh, football people, and that's it. All right, well, <coughs> uh, let's look at uh, before we look at the performance. I would uh, like to ask the viewers there that, of course, uh, few 
comfy and free to call us on the number flashing on uh, your screen. And of course, we're asking uh, the ongoing Africa Cup of Nations uh, uh, being held in Egypt. Uh, we saw Nigeria uh, got trounced, two goals to nil, but by a young Madagascar side. And uh, we had Zimbabwe as well, beaten by the Congo uh, to the tune of four goals to nil. Uh, Wellington, let's just look at the group so far as they stand. We've got Egypt, Uganda, DR, Congo, and Zimbabwe. Of course, Egypt and uh, Uganda have um, you know, gone through there. Yeah. Then we've got Group B. Uh, we've got... Uh, uh, Madagascar, we've got Nigeria, we've got uh, Guinea, and uh, we've got first-timers, uh, Burundi, who've gone with just zero points, but hey, it's about participating. Then we've got Group C, Algeria, Senegal, Kenya, and Tanzania, two East African countries in one group, and we've got Group D, Morocco, Ivory Coast, South Africa, and um, Namibia. Group E, we've got Mali, Tunisia, Angola, and uh, Mauritania. And we've got Group F, the final group, with Cameroon, Ghana, Benin, and Guinea. Wellington, you've been watching this tournament for a long time. So how do you look at, uh, is it, um, it going to be Egypt likely to face Nigeria in the quarterfinals? How, you know, on the last, last 16, how do you think that match would go if Nigeria faced Egypt? Yeah. In the in, in you know in in, in in the knockout stage, uh, that would depend with um, the approach the Nigerians done. If they've put their um, you know, house can in, they house stop in, Salah? <laughs> <laughs> if they uh, look Zimbabwe, we managed to stop him, and if they can put their house in order in terms and the the, uh, the players approach the match focused, I'm sure Nigeria will prevail. Okay, yeah. uh, definitely, and mm. uh, of course there we got uh, Algeria. You know, very unpredictable. You know, the Algerians, the Arabs, you know, they'll come there quiet the first 60 minutes of the match, and boom, you know, it's, mm. it's, it's in. So, good Algeria there, you can't rule them out. Topping the group with nine points, Senegal, Kenya, and uh, Tanzania. So, it's more likely that, uh, you know, Algeria is going to face Ivory Coast, uh, you know, uh, Group D. Yeah. You know, Alger Algeria, Ivory Coast, you know, Al Ivory Coast, you know, yeah. the drug bars are not there anymore. Mm -hmm. How do you look at the current Ivory Coast? Um, I think um, because um, I think every cost at the moment they're in a rebuilding, you know, the post drawbars era, you know, the, there's a lot of players have retired there, but still it's a decent squad. But to face um, uh, Algerians, the Algerians are um, very well organized, it's a very well organized and well drilled team. And they, like you rightly said, they, they just do their job quietly and, you know, uh, to me, Algeria is the dark horse of this tournament. Algeria is a dark horse. Yes, dark well, horse. what's your dark horse if you're watching right now? Uh, give us a call on the number uh, flashing on your screen. Who are uh, your favorites to win this uh, tournament? That's if your country has obviously gone uh, out. Well, let's look at uh, uh, Mali. Uh, of course, that's an open group, Group E. You know, Mali is on four points, Tunisia on two points, Algeria two points. Morocco on one point. So it's all to play for in uh, that group. How do you look at uh, Angola? Of course, a Southern African country there still got a chance. Do you think Angola can uh, represent the Southern region, make Wellington happy? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, uh, fingers crossed. Um, I, I think Angola has got um, quite a good squad, but um, for some reason, just like Zimbabwe, they are not just performing and producing, you know, that killer instinct. But it is a, it is, it is a, you know, a decent squad. Hopefully, they can make it to the last 16 now. Okay, and of course, the black stars, uh, Chale Chale Boy, Chale Chale Boy, <laughs> Ghana, they've not won it since 1980, and they've tried. Yeah. They've reached the semi final, yeah. finals. Uh, yeah. What do you make of them? Uh, I, I, I think Ghana, um, they always have a decent squad, but uh, I think every time we, we go into these tournaments, there are always over expectations for, from the Ghanaian, from the African, you know, supporters, they always expect Ghana to, to do better. And I think that pressure is now getting to the players and the management. So their approach is, you know, when you, you play football under a lot of pressure, that's, that's not good for, for, for the players. It's not good. 
There's oh. too much pressure on um, on Ghana, but it's a decent team. And Cameroon, uh, you know, the Indomitable Lions, they're topping the group. Uh, how do you look at them? Could, 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 could they get another, <clears throat> you know, they've won it three times with mm. the songs. Could you, could it's, a, it's, a, it's another team which, um, like uh, every coast, which has lost a lot of key players to their squad. And you've got the young uh, other players coming through. But they, they're playing very well, and um, I should expect them to, to at least reach the quarterfinals. Okay, uh, you mentioned earlier um, on uh, rebuilding uh, you know, the, the, the players. So, like mm -hmm. you're saying, Ivory Coast are rebuilding. Mm -hmm. uh, why is it that in Africa mm -hmm. uh, football, you've seen like the Nigerian team when they had Kanu? Mm -hmm. You wait until Kanu gets <laughs> to his last breath. Mm -hmm. You wait until Amokachi. Mm -hmm. You wait until Peter Rufai. Mm -hmm. In Zimbabwe, you wait until Pete and Lovu. Mm -hmm. In Zambia, Kalusha, Bwalia. Mm -hmm. Until Kalusha now can't even get up or that then you start bringing the young players. Do you think that's a problem in why we're not developing that? We keep our stars for mm. a very long time. And somebody mentioned mm. that England also had that problem where it's still poor Gascoigne. Mm. You know, it's still poor Gascoigne. Mm. But, you know, you're not bringing in the young players. And the mm. time you bring in the young players, they've never mm. been exposed. It's like you're throwing them right in the deep end. What do you have to say to that? It's, um, it's the structure. The reason we have under-17s, under-21s and under-23s the ideal situation is um, for those uh, certain players to progress. Like now, you have the um, Rashford for, for, for England. They progress through from the under under 17s, under 19s. So this is a, it. Should be like a conveyor belt. Keep going, keep going. But unfortunately, in most of um, African countries, we you mentioned Nakalusha, Bwala, Kanu. It's because those the 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 youngsters who would have been playing in the under 21s are denied the opportunity to progress. But what, what do these players <coughs> become? In my language, we say infumu. Mm. Uh, mm. I don't know what you call chiefs in Zimbabwe. Mm. Igwe. Yeah. This Kanu or Kalusha. You mm. know, they're brilliant players, guys. Mm. Kalusha, Kanu, I'm not criticizing you. When you mm. see me, buy me a pint. I'm only talking for the benefit of <laughs> African football. Please, get me a drink when mm. you meet me. Yeah. So, but why is it this Igwe? You know, mm. um, I won't mention name, but I've mm. been told that there was a country at one time, an African country mm. at the World Cup, that actually... It's uh, alleged that mm. the stars that are playing in Europe were the mm. ones choosing the team. They were like egos. Yeah. Uh, why do we have that, uh, you know, uh, mentality as well? It's um, because when you have these uh, players, like big players, the Samoitos, the Kanus, they, they command a lot of. They are allowed to command a lot of influence into the. Uh, but why? To the well, Rooney is not <coughs> wasn't allowed to command that influence. It, 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 sorry, yeah, yeah. It, it comes back to what I've said from the, from the finances. It's about the structure. If you've got the structure of the national team there, you've got the technical director, you've got the coach, it is up to the coach to, to say, okay, uh, Mr. Kano, I think you, your time is up, or just to simply not call him. It's just as simple as that. When you, when you name the, the squad for, for the World Cup qualifiers, whoever is you, you the coach feels is coming to nearing to, to his end in some instances that's why you you find um, a lot of west africans uh, the ivory coast the, when they employ these um, foreign coaches the the, co the foreign coaches come with this um, uh, they, they, they they apply this uh, this rule when they feel they, they look at a player or technical ability phys physical ability if they feel it's not up to you know up to the national level they they simply drop them and it's not it's not um it's it's not an issue but if sunday marimo comes all of a sudden and thinks um Bilya didn't do well at the um, at, at the afcon and he drops him for the world cup qualifiers people uh, uh, people will be calling for his head mm -hmm. so we need these uh, structures and to to believe and to trust the the people who who give positions to make those um, crucial to crucial decisions and we support them. We support the team. Because at the end of the day, Sandy Marimo might be there or Billiard, but Zimbabwe will still be there. So we can give this opportunity, like these youngsters we are talking about, you are here. Give them an opportunity. If they have, we can't say Billiard, Billiard, four tournaments, Billiard, Billiard, and he's, we, we're not, we are not, uh, he's not producing, he's not getting anywhere. So why not bring in the, you know, some other talented local or foreign-based Zimbabwean? Yeah, okay, you touched on, uh, you know, the foreign <coughs> coaches, uh, having a foreign coach. Wellington, I wait for a time when I'll hear that uh, Ghana or uh, Sierra Leone has uh, sent $50 billion aid to Britain or $50 million to America mm -hmm. or 
a Zimbabwean coach mm. is here to coach Manchester, mm. um, you know, United. What's your take on the foreign coaches coming to, you know, Africa? The late Stephen Kesh said mm -hmm. no. He may so rest in peace. He did say mm -hmm. to the media that we need to promote foreign, sorry, local coaches. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to say about that? You mentioned, you know, the getting in the foreign coaches, the local coaches. Mm -hmm. People say when you use the local coach, mm -hmm. he's also telling players, I'm building my house, you need to be paying me money mm -hmm. for you to play. Mm -hmm. Then a foreign coach is not bad, but the foreign coach will never understand our culture, our game and mm -hmm. stuff. What do you have to say mm -hmm. to uh, the coaching system in Africa today? Yes. Because um, when you bring in a foreign coach uh, to to to, to, to take care of the in charge of the national team, they bring that sort of organizations that we lack. Uh, specifically, if I talk of Zimbabwe, we we had Mark Dulivard uh, and we've got uh, Clemens Westerhoff. When they come, or Renard Fabish, when he, he took over, the, you know, during that, there's some sort of organization and. Fabish wouldn't have let this happen to for for the players to get to to. <clears throat> To, 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 to Egypt without their, you know, finances being sorted out or their daily allowances. They've got these organizations which, which um, we, we, organization skill which we adapt. If you adapt that kind of mentality, that's the mindset that I was talking about. But when we've got these uh, local coaches, they will tend to say, ah, let's go and play, boys. We'll, we'll all, all will be sorted. No, let's... Why should we? Okay, there's, I mean, there's been evidence. That, it's yes. online, mm. uh, so it's not a made-up story. Mm. There's been evidence online of coaches, Af local coaches, being bribed. Mm. You know, uh, we know Africa is a struggle, but you know, why do these coaches take a bribe? Uh, have you experienced that? Do you, you know, you're a man of football. Have you seen that yourself <coughs> in Zimbabwe? Tell us more. There, there's always um, that element of of, uh, of cash and uh, under in cash in in, in in football, unfortunately, and it's not only in Africa. Even here in Europe, it it, it happens a, a, a lot. But the, the the only difference is when you have players now um, bribing the coach to say, "Let me get into the team." That's not good for football, is it? Because you, that person has to play in. Um, he's given a position to play, not based on his ability, but based on on his pocket. And it's not good for football wherever you go around the world. Okay, mm. well, that's brilliant. Well, uh, that's it, of course. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. But, of course, before you go away, uh, there's a Zimbabwean there uh, watching. Uh, this is a man, if you want to play football, get involved in football, feel free to give your details to somebody who would want to join Team Zimbabwe. Yes, uh, we, we can be found in uh, team, team Zimbabwe UK on, on Facebook and um, also on Team Zimbabwe UK dot co dot uk uh, e on email and uh, we are also very soon will be on uh, instagram okay well wellington uh, again a, a big handshake congratulations Thank Team Zimbabwe. Much, they are the <laughs> champions of uh uh, the UK Africa Cup of Nations, they beat uh, Team Nigeria, they beat the Ogans. Uh, it was a fantastic uh, afternoon uh, on Sunday when they beat Team Nigeria to the tune of two goals to nil. There was a lot of brotherhood from uh, Team Nigeria showing Zimbabwe support. Uh, it was quite a very nice afternoon. Don't miss the Africa Cup UK next year. Well, for now, I'll take a quick break and when we come back, we'll wrap up uh, the breakfast show. Stay where you are.